Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Ijama Elazu. Hi, and welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Ijama, and I thank you for joining me for another episode of the podcast. This week, I'm so excited to continue our series talking about how to use social media to market your Etsy shop and help drive sales. That's what we want is sales. And my guest this week is Facebook Live and video strategist, Kimberly Woods. So we're focusing on Facebook this week and specifically Facebook Live. As you'll know, over the last few weeks, I've, I'm trying to help you pick a social media platform that works for you and then really learning it well. That has been the theme over the last few weeks. So I'm excited to have Kimberly on and talk about Facebook. And I just, I don't even know where to start. So Kimberly, thank you for being my guest and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I am so excited to be here today. I am too, because over the last, uh, I want to say, about a year and a half or so, things have been changing on on um, Etsy. And so a lot of sellers are really looking for creative ways to market their products and get more sales. And one of the ways that um, I'm learning is, is good for doing that is using social media. But I've, I've confessed to everyone, I, I believe I did social media wrong. In the beginning, I just thought, I'll just put myself everywhere on the internet and <laughs> people will just find me and it is just stressful. And so yeah. I'm now of the mindset that we really need to pick one platform that we're good at and get really good at it, master it and, and use that. And so... I'm so excited to talk to you about Facebook and in particular video and Facebook live, because as much as I know, it scares a lot of creatives, myself included, to put ourselves out there. Um, I believe video is now one of the best ways to stand out. Yes, it is so true. And I wanted to back up a minute and just applaud you for recognizing that when you first started social media, you were doing it wrong because a lot of people make that mistake. They want to be everywhere and talk to everyone. And really, when you're starting out, one of the most effective strategies that you can do is focus on one platform. And I like to tell people for one year so that you get really good at it and you can really focus on building a community of people on that one platform. So congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) Wow. One year seems like a a commitment because for someone like me, if I don't start seeing, if I don't see traction early, I just feel like, well, it's not working. Let me move on. But it's, it's good to give, you know, a substantial amount of time, even with selling on Etsy. um, Most sellers know you're not going to get that first. Well, I shouldn't say you're not you're not very likely to get that first sale immediately. You list your first product and it takes time. So it just makes sense to do the same thing with with um, social media. But before we get too deep into things, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. So I started an online agency eight years ago. This was back in 2010. And we we um, opened up our doors to our agency and we were offering services for social media. We were doing email marketing, online ads. We were doing content strategy for websites. And when Facebook Live launched in 2016, I decided I wanted to learn everything I could about this tool. And this is because All of the marketing research out there has been saying video, video, video. Things are going to go towards video, video. And I'm sure you notice when you open up your Instagram feed now or your Facebook feed, you probably see that a lot of that content in your feed in 2018 is video. Yes. And so when Facebook Live came out in 2016 and I saw that all the reports were saying video is where it was at, 
I thought I'm going to totally geek out on Facebook live. I want to learn how to effectively use it to drive traffic to websites, to sell products and to grow a community of really great fans and customers. And so I have really, like I said, geeked out. I've studied the strategy and I am now teaching people how to use it for their own businesses. With Facebook Live, do we have to worry about algorithm changes? Because that seems like a song that I hear played on a lot of social media platforms um, is, you know, an algorithm changes and then we have to start doing everything differently. And not just social media, but even on Etsy too, we, we worry about that as well. Is Is video as affected by algorithm changes as just regular social media marketing tactics, I guess? So I think you bring up a great point with the algorithm changes. A lot of people at the end of 2017 and at the beginning of 2018 were freaking out because Facebook announced another new algorithm change. Hmm. And Mark Zuckerberg basically came out and said, we're making these changes on Facebook so that we're prioritizing relationships in the newsfeed over what we think is relevant content to you. Hmm. And in that statement that he made, he flat out said, we know that live video gets more engagement and interaction than any other type of content that you put on Facebook. And if you effectively use live video, it actually helps your organic reach and you show up in more news feeds over posting like a photo post or a link type of a post. So, oh. yeah. So when it comes to these algorithm changes on Facebook, if this is a tool that you're using, mm -hmm. you want to definitely make sure that you are also using Facebook live as part of the content that you're putting out there on the platform. Okay. So as part of what you do. It doesn't necessarily have to be all you do. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So before we get into the specifics about just how to leverage this tool and, and this, this particular strategy, I want to, I would like to address something that I know someone else is thinking right now, not just myself, but can we first talk about just that fear of turning on the camera, putting yourself out there in front of everyone and just <laughs> just putting yourself on blast in yeah. public on Facebook. <laughs> How do we just I'm get laughing past that? Because, <laughs> I'm laughing because I can relate to that. Um, before I did my first Facebook Live, I, I made a goal for myself and only I knew about it. And my goal was I'm going to go live on Facebook on August 27th, I, I gave myself a date and I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm going to go live. And like I said, nobody else knew I made this goal, but inside my head, I was freaking out. I'm like, what am I, what am I doing? Am I really going to do this? Am I really going to turn on the camera and just be live for everybody to see? And what I found was that I could actually practice my Facebook live broadcast in private and so for the couple days leading up to my first live broadcast, I started practicing on Facebook in private, and it really helped me just get myself familiar with the tool, with how it functioned. And then I started going live. And for the first couple weeks, I continued practicing in private. What I found was that that first time of going live was hard. But I just made myself a goal and I committed to go live again the next time and the next time. And really, I know you've probably heard this so many times, but <laughs> practice is what you need. So just keep going live over and over and over again and even try practicing in private. Okay. Now, when you say in private, that means nobody else knows that you're broadcasting? Yes, exactly. So huh. there's two ways you can practice in private. If you're going live from your personal profile, mm -hmm. you can change the 
permissions on that video so that only you can see it. You could also change those permissions so that it's like you and a family member can see it. And actually, when I first started out, I had my settings set to myself and my sisters because I felt like I don't care if I look like a fool in front of my sisters. (laughs) They are great critique or great um, coaches, you know, so I actually went live on my profile in private in front of them. And I have lots of resources or videos on how to do this. And I can give you some links to a few of those so that if your listeners want to see how they can practice in private, it'll walk them through the step-by-step directions on doing that. Now you can also go live into a private Facebook group that only you are a member of, or maybe again, you have a family member or a close friend Hmm. that is a member of that private Facebook group. And you just go live inside of that group. So only the people who are members of that private group can see it. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's encouraging. Yeah. Right. (laughs) You don't, you can actually (laughs) kind of tinker with it before you do your first broadcast. Okay. And um, I, I like what you said about family. I was actually practicing recording some video yesterday and I sent it to, I have seven, we're seven siblings in my family and yeah. they are, like you said, the, uh, I'll call them crit- critics because <laughs> you get our, you know, they give me like the, you know, straight, no sugar coating yeah like, exactly. you look tired the lighting isn't good show more of this Ugh, your background was horrible you know so I'm like oh wow okay I didn't think about all that <laughs> but it's good because it, it, they have no reason to tell me what I want to hear and so it's it's very helpful yes I, I agree you need a couple of people like that in your life who can critique your lives for you it really does help yeah and um for for the live video, you mentioned doing it on your private feed or in a group. Are, when we are ready to do Facebook Lives, are, are our only options to do it from our private pages or can we do it from our business pages or within, within uh, professional groups? Yeah, I actually advise people to do it on your business page as much as possible. Because if you're going live on a Facebook business page, you have uh, the ability to add closed captioning to that video after the broadcast. It also gives you some different insights and analytical tools that you don't see when you go live on your profile or in a group. And you could down the road, turn that Facebook live video into an ad if you go live on your Facebook page. Hmm. So that's why I typically tell people to do most of your live content on your page. Now, I do also agree with going live on your profile and going live in a group, but you need to make sure that the content that you're putting on your profile and in your group varies from what you're putting on your page. That way people are like, yeah, I want to follow Kimberly and I want to follow her on her page and in her group because I'm getting something different inside of her group than I am over on her page. So I do recommend also using a group and a profile if you have them, Mm -hmm. but start with your page, get comfortable with going live on your page, and then you can branch out into the other areas of Facebook. Okay. Okay. That's good to know because I was thinking, I, I, I wasn't sure how it worked. And I was thinking if I do that from my personal profile, I have all these family members who don't really care about Etsy. I don't know any other way to say it. <laughs> and yes. it would just get all kinds of wrong if I do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if I go live on my profile, it's more because I'm sharing behind the scenes stuff where I'm talking more about my family and the day ins and day outs of owning my own marketing agency. Okay. But I'm not really teaching about Facebook Live on my personal profile. Okay. All right. Great. 
Now, Kimberly, one of the things you do is you teach people how to build a loyal following, how to grow their influence and how to sell their products and services using Facebook Live and pre-recorded video. So the last part we're going to talk a lot about because that's what Etsy sellers do is sell their products and services. But Do you think that Etsy sellers should strive to be influencers in their own niches or should they just focus solely on selling products? Yeah, I feel like if you focus on relationships with people, you're naturally going to build a loyal following and they're going to start to see you as a thought leader in your niche. So If you handmade jewelry, they're going to start to really see that, wow, she is good at her craft. Mm -hmm. She, she knows her way around creating jewelry and everything that goes into it. And so when they start to see that you are a leader in that area, it naturally grows your influence. So like I mentioned, I'm going to back up. I think it starts with the relationships. And again, Mark Zuckerberg stated that relationships are what they're striving for in the newsfeed. So if we can take it back to really building one-on-one relationships with the people who are on our Facebook pages or in our groups and who are watching our videos, that's going to help us get more conversations going on our content, which will translate into more organic reach in the newsfeed. Okay. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Um, I think sometimes makers, we might think that, well, my thing is to make this beautiful product. I'm not concerned about gathering, you know, like being a leader in my like leading a tribe or a flock yes, I just want yes. to make. And so it makes sense that in addition to making, we need to build relationships with people. Yep, exactly. So why Facebook Live, say, as opposed to Instagram stories or YouTube, which everyone probably thinks of first when they think video? Yeah, Facebook Live, for me, the reason I I chose this over Instagram stories and YouTube is because I do a lot of, that's just kind of where my community is at. I have a lot of people on Facebook. I utilize the Facebook ad tool sometimes. Mm. And I can also take my Facebook Live videos and I can embed those videos onto my website and onto other areas on the web. So I just chose Facebook because it fit with me at this time in my business. Going back to what you were saying about when you started on social media and you were everywhere, you know, trying to be everything, I decided I'm going to stay on Facebook because that is my platform and that's where my people are at. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So specifically, what types of videos work really well for Etsy sellers? What should we be striving to to do or show in our in the videos that we make if we choose to use Facebook as our platform of choice? Okay, let's start with what is probably the most important for Etsy sellers, and that is selling their products, right? Right. So um, I have a couple different video ideas that work great for this, and I have people inside of my Facebook group who are utilizing these strategies, and they're seeing really good results. So the first one is live sales on Facebook. Have you ever seen any of the live sales that happen on Facebook? not on Facebook, but if they're like the ones they do on Instagram, I think I know, I I understand, but can you explain? Yeah. So I have people in my Facebook group who sell clothing. There's a couple people who do like the Lulu row clothing. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Yes. But they have a Facebook group on Facebook 
that is private and they have a community of friends and customers who are on their Facebook group. And once a week they go live into their Facebook group Mm -hmm. and they hold up their different articles of clothing and the different things that they have for sale that week. And then people on that live video can claim different articles of clothing. They could say, yep, I want number 13 or I want number 18. Okay. And they can secure that, that product for themselves. And this is something that works really good. There was a popular mommy blogger who was doing this back in 2017 inside of a Facebook group for a clothing company similar to LuLuRoe. Mm-hmm. And she was able to make over six figures last year, just going live into her Facebook group and using, using the live video to sell her products. Wow. Yeah. So that's one way you could do it. Okay. You could also hop onto your Facebook page and you could announce a special promo code. And mm-hmm. you could say, if you use BOGO or whatever your promo code is, mm-hmm. Between now and the end of the week, you can get 10% off my product. So if you have a special offering and you could track it with a promo code like that, Mm -hmm. that's another great way to try to sell your products. And you can drive people back to Etsy to actually purchase that product and check out. Okay. I love that idea. Um, I have a couple of questions, though. Does one yeah. first need to set up their own Facebook group in order for this to work if they wanted to do it to a, within a group as opposed to just on their business page? And how big does a group need to be before it becomes viable? Yeah, you could do you could try testing it in both locations. Most of the people I have in my group, like I said, they do it within a group and some of them have less than a hundred people in there and they once a week on their page, they'll promote the upcoming live for the week. They'll tell people the time of day that it's happening and they'll link people over to their Facebook group to join over there. Oh, I see. Okay. That answered my next question, which was how do you start to get the word out and and let people know you're going to do this or when you go live does facebook have a system for informing your community that um that you're live but i guess that would only work if they're on facebook right when you're going live yeah so there's a couple ways you can if you have an email list you can email your customers um or your your subscribers and say hey I'm going live in 15 minutes or I'm going live tomorrow and tell them what your live video is going to be about and where they can join it. Um, You can also just pre-promote it on your page or your profile. Mm -hmm. You could also message people in the Facebook Messenger if you're using that appropriately. You can drive people through Facebook Messenger to your Facebook Lives. You can also schedule the broadcast so that a post appears on your page and it will say Camberley plans to go live on February, you know, 14th at seven o'clock PM. Mm -hmm. And then that post is on your page and people can see when it is I plan to go live. And then I could share that post into my group or on my profile Um, And then the last way you could do it is to set up a Facebook event on your Facebook page. And then at that time of the event, so if you said again, like June 14th at 5 p.m., at that exact moment, they would get a notification on Facebook that the event is happening and it would help drive people to that Facebook Live as well. So there's... There's a lot of options. I know that that probably seems overwhelming, but it just goes to show you that you can start to start small. Yeah. You can share it on your page and then you can say, okay, now I'm going to try scheduling a broadcast. Now I'm going to email it out to my group and scale it up. Okay. 
this is all very eye opening for me. And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll confess, I think Facebook was the first social media platform I got on. Uh And it was more for personal reasons because all my friends were there and I had family on there and it was just a great place to connect. But then I started getting overwhelmed after a while. I think when I started using Facebook for business, Uh and I don't know if I should even confess that on air, but (laughs) I did start getting overwhelmed because I started a Facebook group and I have a Facebook group and I feel like I don't, I'm not a good steward over my Facebook group because I'm yes. not there as much as I would love to be because, you know, there's the podcast and then there's my shop and the, there are all these things to do. And then when I get on Facebook, as soon as I, si- I sign in, I feel like, you know, somebody finds me, not not like from the Etsy community. I mean, like a friend or a family member and then they want to talk and they want to chat and I'm like... <laughs> that's not what I came for. <laughs> and so it just became really a, a really distracted platform for me. Because yep. if I wanted to go on there and do work, like stuff related to the podcast, mm-hmm. I would get distracted by friends and family and I would never ignore them, you know. Yep. So I, I, I pay attention to them or I watch. I I try not to go to my my um homepage because then you get you, you just can't help you get it. Even, sucked in yeah yeah you get sucked in even if nobody knows I'm on there I see the pictures I see what's going on I'm like oh and then <laughs> you know I just go down you know multiple rabbit holes and then I end up kicking myself well feeling bad because I didn't do what I originally wanted to go on there to do so I I started to ignore Facebook because it became a uh, very time consuming for me and I would I would just get anxious about getting onto Facebook and I'm yeah. trying to be better now so one of the things I did to help myself with that was I started hiding people who would populate into my newsfeed but maybe they were a friend of a friend and somehow we connected on Facebook mm-hmm. Um, that way I wasn't distracted and I really tried to clean up my Facebook newsfeed. So it was those family members that I wanted to maintain relationships with Mm -hmm. and then other entrepreneurs that I wanted to network with. Mm -hmm. So I went through and I cleaned up my newsfeed that way. And I also give myself a day or two a week. Usually it's Saturday and Sunday because it's the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I just tell myself, I'm not even looking at Facebook. I have Mm -hmm. to have a complete break from it just so that I can replenish my love for it and hop back on on Monday and start strong. Yes. Yeah. And I think that that would work for me, except (laughs) I, I'm not disciplined enough. Like if I say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'll, I'll go on Facebook. I'll take care of what I need to. And I, I get that sense of relief. Like, okay, I'm all caught up. I'll come back <laughs> in two days. And then in two days, I'm like, oh no, I don't want to. Because <laughs> I know I'm going to see some baby picture or some family member make an announcement about something and then, you know, <laughs> run off in that direction. <laughs> yes, right. It is distracting. So I do have a couple other videos too that people can use to help sell their or to help grow their Etsy business. Yeah. One is product research. Facebook live videos are great for product research. You can hop onto your live and you can simply show people different materials. So if you made children's clothing and you're trying to come out with a new print for summer, You could hop on and have people vote on their favorite prints. And it really helps you with that market research product in creating that product so that you already know, like my customer loves this print that I chose. I know it's going to sell easier. So you can hop on Facebook Live, do that product research. And those videos are great because, again, you're asking your community a question. You're coming to them for feedback Mm -hmm. and they're going to leave comments on your video, which is going to give more engagement to that video because you're getting more comments and reactions. And then that video will show up in more news feeds. So product research is great because you have a lot of back and forth conversation happening with your live viewers. And 
behind the scenes videos showing people the behind the scenes of shipping out your product or if you have a dog that hangs around your office while you work in the day try to really show that behind the scenes and give people your story so that they connect with you because that's one of the things that really is going to differentiate you from other Etsy shops it's yeah. the seller behind that shop so if you can incorporate those behind the scenes or hop on and do a, a question and answer about an upcoming launch, or maybe it's just a question and answer, get to know me type video, yeah. those types of videos really help as well. Now, what happens if people miss the live session? So if they miss the live session, they can still access the recording of that live session. So okay. it's that's what's great about the Facebook live videos is that those videos can stay up on Facebook forever, or you can take them and you can embed them into a blog post or put that video on your website. Okay. And that was going to be my next question was, can you repurpose the videos? Can you only put them on a website like is it worth it is it even possible to put them up on YouTube also just yes you can I know people who have repurposed their Facebook lives and they'll put them onto YouTube or they will take the closed captioning transcript of their live and tweak it into a blog post mm -hmm. I know some people who are now using Facebook live to record their podcast if they're doing interviews so that people could watch it live and they also can take that recording and and use that for their podcast okay well that's good to know so in the beginning um there's a seller who wants to start using facebook live but doesn't yet have a big following or or um you know just a uh, a lot of people who are aware of, of them on Facebook yet. Do you have any strategies for how to increase views or get more engagement for someone who's just starting out? Yes. So tip number one, the moment you see that red live button show up on your screen, trust that you are live and jump right into your video. Don't mm. waste precious time saying, hi, is anybody there? Can yeah. you hear me? Can you see me? Yeah. Because people who are seeing the recording of that live are just going to skip by it because let's face it, a lot of people are time poor. So we need to get right to the point sometimes yeah. and at least let them know what the video is going to be about. And then we can take our time engaging more with the viewers. Okay. So number one would be just jump right in the moment it goes live by telling people what it is they are going to learn today okay. or by asking your community a question or jumping into a story okay. so that right away we're, we're moving forward with the recording. Okay. Now, another thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to think about your call to action. And this is one of the most important elements of a Facebook Live. That call to action is the action we want the viewer to take from this live. Do you want people to go visit your shop? Do you want them to use a promo code? Do you want them to simply just leave a comment on your live or go and sign up for your email list? Always think about that goal for the Facebook Live video and how are we going to get the viewers to take action so you can reach that goal? Okay. Now, another thing that you want to think about is the call to comment. And this is very important because if you get more comments on your Facebook Live video, then Facebook says, wow, this is really a video that people are liking. People may want to see this in their newsfeed. And then they're going to put that video organically into more news feeds. And by organically, I just mean you're not paying for it. This is all free reach that is happening. Okay. So your calls to comment are important because they're going to help that organic reach. So you could, your call to comment could be asking a question, hey, where's everybody watching from today? 
or when I'm on live, I can see who is joining the live. It will tell me Patty is watching your live right now. Hmm. And I will simply say, Hey Patty, how are you today? Are you staying warm? And hmm. I've asked Patty a question. So now Patty is going to probably leave me a comment back. Oh yes, we're staying warm today. So you want to ask all your viewers comments and also try to individualize the questions or the calls to comments as well by calling people individually out by name. And that's one of the beautiful things about live video is this live engagement where we're having a back and forth conversation between mm -hmm. me on video and my viewer in the comments. Okay. So how easy, cause how easy is it? Would you suggest that um, a seller script out what they're going to say so they don't get distracted between trying to engage with people who are watching the video and staying on point with why they're doing the live video. Yes, I, I highly, highly recommend that you outline your content before you go live. I have a download that will walk your listeners through this that I'll give oh, to you okay. and they can outline their live broadcast and it takes into consideration that first sentence, how are you going to start the live? Yeah. It also takes into consideration that call to action I mentioned, mm -hmm. the calls to comments, and just outlining the specific topic or thing that you're you're there to teach about or show on your Facebook Live. Okay. Oh, that's so fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. One of the things that you've referenced are your videos. Now, can people get access to this by joining your Facebook Live 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 Lab? Yeah. So you can join my Facebook Live Lab to get access to some of my videos. Okay. And most of my videos are actually on my business page, which is Live Marketing with Camberley Wood. So on that page, I share some of those tutorials on practicing in private and um, the Facebook Live outline, how to make a really great outline for your video. Okay. And that's live marketing with KimberlyWoods.com. Um, so on Facebook, if you search live marketing with Camberly Woods, then I'll okay. pull up there. Okay. And then my, my website's just KimberlyWoods.com. Okay. And I'll link to Camberly's website and, and also the, I'll put a link for her Facebook live lab so you can join that. And then I'll make sure I have the search terms on the, on the notes for this page too. So, um, folks remember how to search for your live marketing videos on Thank Facebook. Thank you. Yeah. I'd love to have you guys join my, my Facebook live lab. I do a lot of coaching in there. People will ask me questions on, Hey, I'm trying to use this new piece of software mm -hmm. and I'll give them step-by-step -step demos and things like that in that group. Okay. Perfect. Now, one of the things you mentioned earlier, and I, I just want to see if it's worth touching on was you said you can possibly use the live video you make for Facebook ads. Is that something that sellers should also want to take into consideration is Facebook ads? Or do you think just doing live video is enough or at least a good start? Yeah, I think if you're going to incorporate Facebook ads, you need to have a good strategy in place. So okay. you need to have a place to drive people to. Okay. So um, on my videos, when I turn them into ads, I have a really solid call to action. And one of the calls to actions I use is leave a comment on my Facebook Live video that says outline and I'll give you my Facebook live outline. Mm -hmm. And that is a video that I run ads for because once they leave a comment that says outline, then I, I message them back and forth in Facebook messenger and I give them that outline mm -hmm. and start having conversations with them over there. So you can see that I have a strategy in place for that video, right? I want them yeah. to leave a comment and my goal is to get them conversing with me over in Facebook Messenger. So 
for your Etsy shop, you want to make sure that when you're turning on your Facebook live videos, that your goal might be that you're wanting people to snag a promo code or something along those lines so that you're driving people back to your shop and to a sell, which is your, your overall goal. Okay. All right. This so is I guess my, fun. sorry, to back up. I yeah. think the short answer is don't just start throwing money to your Facebook lives yeah. for ads unless you have a solid strategy in place. Cause I would hate for you. I know, I know a girl who spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on her Facebook ads and didn't really know how to do them correctly. Mm. And she didn't have her strategy in place and it, she just basically threw away thousands and thousands of dollars mm. towards Facebook ads. And I don't want people doing that until they're ready. Yeah. One of the things I think about when it comes to Facebook ads is, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it should at the end lead to something that's going to make you money. So you get back a return on your investment. It shouldn't lead to nothing. Exactly. Okay. So yes. That's a perfect way to, to state that. Okay. Now, I know you're all about Facebook, but are there any resources, and, and it could be for Facebook, doing Facebook Live and video or something else, but any resources in particular that you're using and you find really helpful that you don't mind sharing with the audience? Um, to help me with my Facebook Lives? Yes. Yeah, so I know this seems kind of silly because it's not Facebook, but I utilize a lot of different YouTube podcasts mm. um, because I know that a lot of the video strategy and what's working on YouTube can be applied to my Facebook Live strategy as well. Okay. Um, so I love to see what people are doing on Instagram stories or YouTube because I think it's great to keep tabs on those and incorporate that same best practice to what I'm doing. So um, podcasts are a great way to start. I will just search, you know, different topics or find YouTube podcasts. I also just kind of pay attention to some of the other thought leaders on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So Mari Smith, I'm not sure if you've heard of her. She's yes. a big fan a big Facebook guru. I, I try to make sure I'm following her social media examiner. Um, a lot of these bigger marketing gurus so that I'm also listening to what they're saying as well. Okay. All right. Very good. Thanks. That's helpful. Yeah. And I don't even know if people are aware that you, that there are podcasts that you can listen to or watch on Facebook. I recently just discovered that as well. Yes, I love podcasts. I just am constantly searching different topics and I see yes. which ones populate in that are recent or have good reviews. Yes. And just one last thing, which I forgot to, to ask, but I think um, is, is important is what kind of equipment for recording should, should we be thinking about investing in, if any? Yeah. If you're just starting out, mm -hmm. you want to start with your smartphone okay. that is free and yes. it doesn't take a lot of investment, right? Yes. Uh, most people have a smartphone that has a camera on it. Yeah. So I tell people start with your smartphone and once you get comfortable going live, start adding on lighting options or audio or adding a tripod to your phone. And then when you feel like, okay, I'm getting comfortable with the phone, then you can move over to doing desktop prod broadcasting and okay. get a webcam and things like that. And I have tech guides and trainings on this as well in my Facebook Live Lab. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. This is all very helpful. Now, Yay, I'm glad. <laughs> Kimberly, if someone wants to get in touch with you, perhaps they have more questions about things that we maybe didn't get to talk about. What's the best way for, for that person to connect with you? Yeah. So you can go to camberlywoods.com 
or go to Facebook and search uh, FB Live Lab, which is that private Facebook group we've talked about, yes. or go to my Facebook page, Live Marketing with Camberly Woods. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. I will have links to all of these. And um, I know that over the last few weeks, um, there's a lot to think about as far as, you know, um, Etsy sellers and, and deciding what platform is is best for them. So I know this will be helpful to someone who's listening and trying to figure out which social media platform they want to pick and, and get good at. Thank you for also recommending that we try it for at least a year before deciding that it does or doesn't work and then moving on to something else. Yeah. And I really give that recommendation too, because it takes time to learn strategy and you're going to go into a social media platform with no knowledge. Then you're going to get your 101 type, you know, beginning knowledge of that platform. And then after you get a good foundation of those beginning basics on the social media platform, then you can start to up level it and take it to like, now you have your master's knowledge, right? Yeah. You know, the equipment that you can use for Facebook live, or you know how to add in those Facebook ads. So it takes time and it doesn't happen overnight. And that's why I say one platform, one year. Okay. Very good. Kimberly, thank you so much for sharing all this information and, and just, coming on and giving me and everyone else listening just a fresh outlook and perspective on live video and, and the benefits of live video and how we can use it. Um, it's been very helpful and very eye-opening, and I thank you for taking the time out to share. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And I thank you for listening to the podcast. I will be back next week. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes, and while you're there, please leave a review, too. Visit ConvoMe.com to leave a comment or feedback on this episode.